What's up, guys? Let's see if you can see homie here. Um, so today's video, um, I want to talk about this new book I just read. It is called The 50th Law. Um, this book is written by 50 Cent and Robert Greene. So, um, I really like this book. Um, it kind of relates to like the, I don't know if you ever heard of the Stoic or Stoicism. It kind of, it kind of, it's kind of, kind of similar to it. It talks about being fearless, you know, how you should be fearless in your life and pursue really like anything that you want to be with, the, with, with no doubt, you know, uh, being, just being fearless and ambitious in what you want to do in your life. And it's kind of like, so, so it talks about 50 cents life, right? Um, and 50 cent almost died. So to him, like he kind of went through that. Um, so he, so he decided like he was, he was going to do everything he could to have a good life or to have a better life because he might die at any time, you know? And that's um, that's kind of like stoicism, right? Memento mori. Um, I forgot what exactly what it translates to, but um, it's basically to remind yourself that you're gonna, you're gonna die one day, right? Um, and we have limited time in this planet. Um, you never know when, when you might die. So stoicism, talks about like doing everything correctly like uh, say saying love saying uh, I love you to your loved ones uh, like not not letting your emotions control you uh, your your anger control you that's what kind of like stoicism is about uh, roughly you know um, I haven't really I mean I've listened to uh, podcasts and stuff like that but I don't think I've ever really read a stoicism book, which that's going to change. Uh, but anyways, I wanted to uh, kind of review this book. Like I said, it's the 50th law. And honestly, guys, I am a horrible reader. Like, uh, like I can't, I can't, it's hard for me to sit down and actually focus on what I'm reading for, for a long, for a long time, you know? Um, so... You know, it's kind of that, that that was it's hard for me to read, but this book, like literally the first day I got it, I read I read like eighty something pages. Homie, no way, no. And I got it on a Sunday. Today, today is no homie, no no. Today is. Um, Friday. No, today's Thursday. So I bought this book um, last Sunday. So I finished it in less than a week. Um, yeah, that's how good this book is. Honestly, like, like I said, I don't really. I'm not a good reader. I read. I just finished reading Think and Grow Rich. I just finished reading that one, and that one was hard to read. I'm not gonna lie. Like, it was hard for me to. Um, so. It was hard for me to read, but what I've been trying to do is um, is read at least ten pages a day, um, and I got that idea because I read uh, I I read this book seventy five hard, and I tried, and this is by um, Andy Frisella. I don't know if you ever if you ever listened to his podcast. I forgot what this podcast is called, but it's Andy Frisella, and he wrote this seventy five hard, and he has a he has a program about to to better your life you know and it's a it's a 75 day challenge where you gotta read 10 pages a day um uh, do like two workouts a day and uh you gotta take a picture every day and you gotta drink a gun of water every day so it's a challenge right but anyway that's where i got the idea uh to just read 10 pages a day but with this book like i was like i said i read I read like 80 something pages the first day I got it. Um, and then it, it made me want to keep reading. Like it's really easy to read. Um, 
so yeah, I finished it in less than a week. Today is May, and I started this book like in January. So that was, you know, it's a thick book. This is 280 pages. Uh, it's not too bad, you know, 280, it's not that bad. Um, so if you read 10 pictures a day, you should be able to get it done in like 30 days in a month, right? Um, but like I said, I, I ran right through it. It was a great book. It's really easy, it's really easy to read. Homie. It's really easy to read. Um, look at the pages. So that's really easy compared to compared to this. Like this is like like um what do you, what's the word for it? Like it's uh fuck I forgot. Intimidating, yeah. Like having to read this whole page to me is like intimidating. It's like damn, I gotta get through all that. But this book is like it's like a white background and it's spaced out and it has like these at the top it'd be nice if it had pictures <laughs> but uh like see and it has like quotes um so let me see let me see let me find a good one so say i like you reading you're reading through it boom, boom, boom. It's like it's nice paragraphs and then you come to a quote um like a quote it's like keys to being fearless and it's a keys to being fearless and it's a quote by somebody you know and then at the end at every chapter every chapter has like a, a quote as well or like something really meaningful it has in, in the beginning of every chapter and then it also has like a another quote before you start the chapter and like this one's from Malcolm X you know he was a really fearless leader you know also so yeah, this is a pretty good book. Um, like I'm telling you, it's, t it's, t it's teaching you about being fearless in your life and really pursuing what you want. Um, but I just wanted to read a couple of things that I found really meaningful when I was reading it. So I'm gonna read a couple of quotes. And some of it, like like the, the way this is written, is pretty cool because it like, I'm not sure if every book does this, I don't think so, but like it tells you a story in the beginning like a story of uh, something you can relate to. And then at the end of the chapter, it, it brings it together with with a lesson in life that you can take out of it. You know what I mean? So if you can relate to the story, you'll relate to the message or you will, you will be able to understand that message that much more. Um, and sometimes, like, like I said, like it's a whole page that is really good really good stuff um uh, like it's just line after line it's like damn okay uh let me see if i can find something like right here see i highlighted all that this whole thing and then a couple here and then there's pretty much this whole page i highlighted that whole thing <clears throat> so this is um i feel like it's a, a good book uh let me see if i can find something smaller i can read that Let's see, I found something here. And like I said, I only, I only, you know, highlighted what really made sense to me that day, you know? And then I'm gonna go back to read it, I'm gonna go back and read it again, and I'm probably gonna highlight something new, you yeah? know? Uh, let's see, here's one. All of the greatest innovations in history come from openness, from an openness to, dis to discovery. One idea leading to another, sometimes coming from unrelated fields. You must develop this spirit and the same incentable, in, incitable. I can't read, I can't, I don't know how you say that shit. Like I said, I'm a horrible reader. Uh, incitable hunger for knowledge. This comes from wintering your fields of study and observations, letting yourself be carried along by what you discover. So basically that's talking about like entrepreneurship. Like if, if you find an, if you find an idea and let's say, all of the greatest innovations in history come from an openness to discover. So, if, so let's say you start a business and then you discover something else and you're open to it, you know? um one idea leading to another you know what i'm saying so you go through something and then that brings you to something else 
sometimes coming from unrelated fields, right? So like, it could be you're in this industry, but you find this other industry that interests you as well, or that seems like a good idea to you. You must develop this spirit and the same insatiable, I don't know what, I don't know how to, I'm not sure if I'm saying that word right, but I can, I can, I can see what it means from the context of the sentence. Insatiable hunger for knowledge, like, like a strong hunger for knowledge, basically, right? So if you really want to learn, you're going to learn what interests you, what ideas bring come to your mind, you're going to learn about it. This comes from wintering your fields of study and observation, letting yourself be carried along by what you discover. So if you discover something else, you know, seems like a good idea, you can make profit off of it, you know, why not? You know, and you find something else, you know, that's kind of, I can really relate to that because that's what's kind of like going through my life right now. You know, like, uh, I've been an entrepreneur, like a self, completely self-employed uh, for a little over a year now. And I've gone, you know, I've had a lot of different ideas, um, you know, and I've just been trying them all. And, you know, there's no, there's no reason why it, like, if you can make money from something, but then you got something else that is probably bigger and you can also make money off of it, why not, you know? Um, till you, till really you find something that you really want to focus on. That's what I'm thinking, you know? So I can really relate to that one. Like right now, you know, I started with bounce houses. Um, I started making t-shirts um, and then I started this hot shot thing. Um, and then I'm starting my brokerage, you know, and then I have other ideas. Like I have a full picture of what I want to get to, but and that's kind of what this book also talks about is like, like you see the full picture, but you're not exactly sure how you're going to get there. You know what I'm saying? Like what really matters is that you have a strong desire for what you see at the top. Like I, like I think about it as like a big, big bubble, two big bubbles at the top, and then like something coming down like a tree, like a fountain of how I'm gonna get there. You know what I mean? Uh, let's see if, okay, let's see if I can find another one. Here's one. Move before you are ready. Most people wait too long to go into action. Generally out of fear, they want more money or better circumstances. You must go the opposite direction and move before you think you are ready. And then I didn't highlight anything and it says, the venture has to succeed and so it will. <laughs> I don't know where I'm looking at, it, but uh, that's crazy. You know that really, I can really relate to that just based on uh, other, based on other videos I've looked, I've seen on YouTube, like, uh, like if, if you've ever heard of uh, Bob Proctor or um, Napoleon Hill, or um, who else is a good one? Uh, but yeah, anything, anything like those, um, I'm drawing a blank right now, but that's what really comes to my mind right now. It's Bob Proctor, Napoleon Hill, um, your wish is your command. If you guys know anything about that, that's kind of what it's saying. Like, you have to have a strong desire that it's going to succeed. You're not ex exactly sure, but it's going to succeed. You know what I mean? Being fearless. Being fearless in what you're doing. Like, because you know you're going to succeed. So, yeah. Uh, here's a good one. This is a this is a quote. It's a, the the middle of the page, but they just put a they just put a quote there. It says keys keys to fearlessness, and then it has a quote. This is by Frederick Frederick. I don't even know how to say his last name. <clears throat> I don't know who it is. All right, in nooks all over the earth sit men who are waiting. Scarcely 
knowing in what they are waiting, much less that they are waiting in vain. Occasionally, the call that awakens that accident which gives the permission to act comes too late when the best youth and strength for action has already been used up by sitting still and many have found their horror when they are leaped up that their limbs had gone to sleep and their spirit had become too heavy it's too late they said to themselves having lost their faith in themselves and henceforth forever useless damn that's crazy if you need her Here's another good little line. You have no time to lose fear. You have no time to lose to fear and depression. And you do not have the luxury of waiting. Damn, son. Like, get your ass moving, son. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's like momentum mori. Momentum mori right there. Like, you're going to die. You don't have time to just fucking sit around and tell yourself you're depressed. You know what I'm saying? Like, Joey Diaz said, I wipe my asshole with depression. Joey Diaz. You don't know who that is? Go look him up. It's a comedian. Yeah, this book is good. This book is really good. You guys should go read this book. If you're interested in some of the quotes or lines that are read right now, definitely go read this book. This is like I read, I highlighted, I highlighted this whole page. Like I highlighted this paragraph and I was like, I started reading this. I was like, damn, all that shit's good too. So I just drew an arrow. But I'm going to start it. It says, but human nature serves a great impediment to this. We are naturally consumed by immediate battles and problems. We find it very difficult, if not unnatural, to focus with any depth on the future. Thinking ahead requires a particular thought process that comes with practice. It means seeing something practical and achieving and achievable several years down the road and mapping out how this goal can be achieved. It means thinking in branches, coming up with several paths to get there, depending on the circumstances. It means being emotional attached to this idea so that when a thousand distractions and interruptions seem to push you off course, you have the strength and purpose to keep at it so yeah this book is good if you guys have liked what i've read you know it's this really good book um i'm not sure if i can give it like a like a 10 out of 10 uh <laughs> i thought it was a great book uh you know good strong message um easy to read easy to relate to if, uh, if you like 50 Cent, you know, if you like any of his businesses or if you know anything about how rich he is, you know, you should be interested in this book. Um, go read this book. Um, yeah, so, so this year, guys, um, I have decided I want to read more books. Um, I decided I want to read, I want to read at least four books. <laughs> that doesn't seem like a lot, but like I said, I'm a horrible reader. I've, I've, uh, I've never really actually focused on reading. Like I read a couple books here and there, but I've never really focused on it. But this year, uh, I want to focus on it. I'm going to I'm gonna read four books this year, twice. So it's basically eight books, right? But I want to read them twice so that I can go back and highlight other shit. Um, yeah, so I read Thinking Girl Rich. And yeah, I'm going to read that one again. My freaking dog got to it, but he only ripped a few pages, not too many. And then I'm going to, like I read this one already, I'm going to end up reading it again. Um, but, for, but for now, I'm thinking of either reading this one. This is The Way of the Superior Man by David Data. It says, The Way of the Superior Man is a spiritual guide to mastering the challenges of women, work, and sexual desire. 20th Anniversary Edition. So this is a book that uh, somebody told me about, and it's a good book. So I'm, I'm thinking either reading that one or this one first. And this is The Guide the guide to the Good Life. Um, and this is by William Irving. Irvin. And uh, this is like stoicism. <clears throat> so one of the, it says, 
One of the greatest fears many of us face is that despite our efforts and striving, we'll discover the end that we have wasted in our life. Anyway, it's a, it's the wisdom of the Stoic philosophy. So I've been thinking about either reading this one or, or this one first. I don't know. Sure. I don't really want to order it since I already finished 75 hard. I'm probably just going to go to Barnes and Noble and see which one I can find. Uh, but yeah, guys, uh, I'm going to read, like I said, I'm going to read four books and I plan on doing, I plan on doing uh, reviews kind of like I did for this one. Um, so yeah, man, read this book.